In the U.S., ride inspections are handled by individual states and there's no federal authority in charge of them. Accordingly, depending on the state, what happens in a ride inspection changes dramatically. Today we'll be looking at some of the differences between states and how they inspect their rides. All of this data is provided by Rides Database and the source can be found in the description if you're interested in learning more. Starting things off, there are 8 states where ride inspections are not handled by any state body. In these states, accidents may be investigated by local police departments, but there are no regular state inspections of rides and some accidents may go uninvestigated, especially if there are no injuries. These states are Alabama, Arizona, Mississippi, Montana, North Dakota, Nevada, South Dakota, and Wyoming. Many of these states do not have any rides, and some of them also have local bodies that do complete ride inspections, such as Las Vegas, Nevada, where the Clark County Division of Building and Fire Prevention performs ride inspections and accident investigations. Moving up a level, one state, Idaho, completes only electrical inspections of rides and does not inspect water slides. Nine states have some form of private sector oversight. This oversight does not always cover all ride types, and it generally consists of government bodies ensuring that a private third-party entity has inspected a ride before it is allowed to operate. A few of these states are Delaware, Kansas, Minnesota, Oregon, Texas, and Virginia. These states have minimal oversight over rides directly, but do hire outside agencies to inspect rides on a somewhat regular basis, and they hire these agencies to investigate ride accidents. It should be noted that all states, except for the eight without regulations, require that rides be inspected at least yearly. 20 states have comprehensive oversight on ride inspections and accident investigations. This includes things such as multiple inspections per year, requiring rides to be ASTM F24 compliant, having a comprehensive ride permitting system, requiring owners to report most or all incidents, and requiring states to reinspect rides after these incidents. These states include Alaska, Arkansas, California, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Louisiana, Illinois, Kentucky, Massachusetts, Maryland, Maine, Michigan, North Carolina, New Hampshire, New Jersey, Ohio, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island. Some of these states also have some kind of state-level ride safety advisory board. With all that being said, even in states with comprehensive regulations, the industry is still very much self-regulated. In 35 states, ASTM F24 standards are explicitly referenced in their laws, and they are often brought up as good operating guidelines in other states. These guidelines are written by those in the industry. Additionally, ride inspections is a very niche skill. Accordingly, for many states, those inspecting rides in a government role have previously worked for the parks or attractions they are inspecting. This is not to say they cannot be trusted, though. In fact, the extremely low amount of accidents that occur, especially in states with good regulations, speak to how well this system is working. A few other interesting things to note include that in only 34 states, the state government has the authority to shut down rides. Keep in mind that localities may also have this ability. Nine states require that operators be older than 18 years old. This can create some awkward situations for parks like Carowinds, which is located on the border of North and South Carolina. On the North Carolina side of the park, all operators must be over 18, but on the southern side, operators may be under this age. Though it should be noted that there's no evidence of any connection between operator age and ride safety. All states with regulations require that rides be insured and 38 states require that rides must be registered with the state in order to operate. Only 10 states require portable rides be inspected at each setup. All states with regulations inspect portable rides and amusement rides at small venues such as FECs. Most with regulations also inspect rides at large amusement parks, with the exception of Florida, which currently does not inspect rides at parks with more than 1,000 employees. This includes when accidents occur. Finally, the content of what occurs during a ride inspection varies from state to state, with some more progressive states in this area, such as Ohio, expanding to look at things like rust, as well as completing other checks like ensuring that a ride's control system works properly under all situations, properly shutting down the ride if anything unusual were to occur, as well as completing things like G-Force testing to ensure that rides are ASTM compliant. Other states may simply look to ensure that all electrical stops are working properly and look for any other obvious problems. 
This is truly nuanced from state to state, and if you'd like to learn more, I would recommend reaching out to your state government to see what's involved. Additionally, the resource I used to create this video is linked in the description so you can learn more. Finally, I've also provided a link to a Google Drive that I have begun maintaining with all of the public ride safety data I've collected over my time researching this topic. The amusement industry truly wants to be as safe as possible, and having more eyes look over all of these ride safety topics is a good thing. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.